Hello everyone. We are going to start with the mo uh, module two, of lecture two. So earlier we in the lecture one we saw the few topics related to geometric representation. Here we are going to discuss about the the Schwab inequality and Gram-Schmidt orthogonal orthogonalization procedure. The Schwab inequality. Here we need to prove it. The condition whether it is true or false. The consider any pair of energy signal S y of S one of t and S two of t. The Schwab inequality states that the sum integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of S one of t into S two of t dt the whole square is less than or equal to the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity S R S one of T the whole square into dt and multiplied with integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s2 of t the whole square into dt. This is equation 15. And this equality holds if and only if s2 of t is equals to c into s1 of t, where c is then any constant. The solution is to prove this. Important inequality. Let s1 of t and s2 of t be expressed in terms of the pair of orthonormal basis function pi1 of t and pi2 of t as follows. s1 of t is equal to s11 pi1 of t plus s12 pi2 of t. s2 of t is equal to s21 of pi1 of t plus s22 into pi2 of t. Where pi one of t and pi two of t satisfy the orthonormal relative condition over the time interval minus infinity to plus infinity, the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity pi one pi i of t into pi j of t into dt is equals to delta i j is equals to one for j is equals to one zero otherwise. So this we have proved it in our the previous video and we know this condition. On this basis, we may represent the signal s1 of t and s2 of t by the following respective pair of vector, as illustrated in Figure 5. We can see this figure here: s11 and s12, s22 and s21. So this is then done on the domain of a pi one and pi two. This is nothing but the vector representation of s one of t and s two of t, providing the background picture for proving the Schwarz inequality. S one is equals to s one one and s one two. S two is equals to s two one and s two two. From this figure five, we see the cosine of angle theta subtended between the vectors s1 and s2 is cos theta is equals to s1 transpose into s2 divided by s mod of s1 into mod of s2. That is equal to integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of s1 of t into s2 of t dt divided by Integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s1 of t the whole square into dt raised to the power of 1 by 2 into integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of s2 of t the whole square into dt raised to 1 by 2. Considering mod of cos theta less than or equal to 1, the Schwarz inequality of a 15 immediately follows from equation 16 also from the first line of equation 16 we note that mod of cos theta is equals to 1 if and only if s2 is equals to c into s1 where c is an arbitrary constant thus the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of s1 of t into s2 of t into dt the whole square Less less than or equal to the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s s one of t the whole square into dt the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s two of t the whole square into dt hence proved 
this is how we prove the Schwarz inequality. Now, again, we need to note some of the things. That is, the Schwarz inequality applies to real valued signals. It may be read readily extended to complex valued signals in which case 15 is reformulated as mod of integration of minus infinity to plus infinity of S1 of t into S2 of t. This S2 of t is nothing but complex conjugate of S2 of t. So S2 complex conjugate of t into tt less than or equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity mod of S1 of t the whole square into dt raised to the power of 1 by 2 into square root integration of minus infinity to plus infinity mod of S2 of t the whole square into dt mod of r is to the power of 1 by 2. This is equation 17. Here the asterisk symbol denotes the complex conjugation and the equality holds if and only if S2 of t is equals to c into S1 of t where c is a constant. Next is the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure. Here the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure is the mathematical representation of geometric representation of the signal. Suppose pi 1 of t into comma pi 2 of t so on up to pi n of t are set real orthonormal function each of duration t second then by definition 0 to integration of 0 to t capital T of pi j of t into pi k of t into dt is equals to 1 for j is equals to k is equals to 0 for j not equal to k. This is equation 1. Also, we may represent set of real valued signals s1 of t comma s2 of t so on up to s capital N of t each of the duration t second as linear combination of n. n orthonormal function of pi j of t j is equals to 1 comma 2 so on up to n. Si of t is equals to summation of j is equals to 1 to capital N into of Sij into pi j of t. That's equation 2. Where i is equals to 1, comma 2, comma up to capital M. Where Sij are coefficient given by Sij is equals to integration of 0 to capital T of Si of t into pi j of t into dt. This is equation 2. 3. Now, this equation, you see, S1 of t is equals to S11 pi 1 of t plus S12 pi 2 of t plus S13 pi 3 of t plus so on up to S1 of n pi n of t is equation 4. Next, S2 of t is equals to S21 pi 1 of t plus S22 pi 2 of t plus S23 pi 3 of t plus so on up to S2n pi n of t equation 5. S3 of t is equals to S31 pi 1 of t plus S32 pi 2 of t S33 pi 3 of t plus so on up to S3n pi n of t this is equation 6. So similarly if we carry on up to Sm of t is equals to S M1 pi 1 of t plus S M2 pi 2 of t plus S M3 pi 3 of t plus so on up to S M N pi n of t. This is equation 7. This is how we got the equation. Now we have to do step by step for each equation on one thing and we need to find the values there. Now the gram schmidt orthogonalization procedure is as follows. Step 1. In equation 4, set all coefficient sij is equals to 0 except s11 then we have s1 of t is equals to s11 pi 1 of t that's equation 8 squaring and integrating over 0 to capital t the equation 8 becomes integration of 0 to capital t of si of t si of t the whole square into dt is equals to integration of 0 to capital t s11 the whole square into pi 1 
of t is the whole square dt. Next, on solving zero integration of zero to capital T of s1 of t the whole square into dt is equals to s1 1 the whole square integration of integration of zero to t pi 1 of t the whole square into dt this will become equal to 1 and then in therefore s1 of the whole square is equals to integration of zero to t s1 of t the whole square into dt this is equation 9 and from equation 8 pi 1 of t is equals to s1 of t divided by s11 that's equation 10 hence pi 1 of t and s11 are determined step 2 set all the coefficient in equation 5 to 0 except s21 and s22 we have then s2 of t is equals to s21 pi 1 of t plus s2 to pi 2 of t the equation 11 multiplying both the sides of equation 11 by pi 1 of t and integrating over the interval 0 to t we have um, the integration of 0 to t s2 of t into pi 1 of t dt is equals to integration from 0 to capital t of s21 pi 1 of t the whole square into dt plus integration of 0 to t of s22 into pi 2 of t into pi 1 of t of dt this will become 0 then this will become 1 so i have substituted here s21 integrated from 0 to t pi 2 of pi 1 of t the whole square into dt plus 0 so this will again become 1 that is what i am told here so at last we can say s21 is equals to integration of 0 to t s2 of t into pi 1 of t into dt this is nothing but equation 12 rewriting equation 11 we get s2 of t is minus s2 of t minus s21 pi 1 of t is equals to s22 into pi 2 of t squaring and integrating above equations we have 0 integrating from 0 to capital T into of s2 of t minus s21 of pi 1 of t the whole square into dt that is equals to integration of 0 to capital T s22 the whole square s2 to the whole square of t it should be of t pi 2 of square pi 2 of t of the whole square into dt this should sorry sorry it should be s2 to the whole square next s2 to the whole square will come out in the integrator from 0 to t capital t into pi 2 of t the whole square into dt therefore s2 to the whole square of integration of 0 to capital t of s2 of t minus s21 of pi 1 of t the whole square into dt because this becomes 1 this becomes equation 13 from equation 11 pi 2 of t is equals to s2 of t minus s21 of pi 1 of t divided by s22 this is equation 14 thus pi 2 of t s21 and s22 are determined next is a step 3 And the next one, step 4. This is the above procedure is been continued till all the n orthonormal function pi 1 of t, pi 2 of t, so on of 2, pi n of t and the coefficient of s i j are obtained. The set of n, ortho, n orthonormal policy function is not unique for a given set of m signals. So this is how we do it. Okay, thank you.